welcome to Mr. Wardlow's class. We're going to go over this in-class worksheet. Uh, this is also being taped in case you have a problem with your homework in the next few nights. You can always refer to this video on my blog. Okay, we're going to be turning word problems into equations, systems of equations, and solving them using a system of matrices. Just got five easy steps. First, of course, you always want to state your variables. You want to write a system of equations based on those variables. Then you want to write the matrix equation. Then finally, solve using the inverse and answer the question. The first yummy problem we have involves cakes and pies. Susie Baker sold 75 cakes and pies today. Each cake sells for $10 and each pie sells for $15. If she took in 910 today, how many of each did she sell? So we want to define our variables first and we're going to call C cakes and P pi. We could have used X and Y, and, and we are going to for the next two problems, but I wanted to, to try to use some e easy variables first. Okay, so cakes send, sell for $10 and pies for $15 for a total of $910. So we do all the money in one equation. Then we do the uh, numbers some number of cakes plus some number of pies equals 75. And since C stands for the number of cakes and P stands for the number of pies, we can put that all in one equation. Now we're going to turn all of this into a matrix equation. We've got the coefficient equation here, 10, 15, 1, and 1. Our variables are C and P, and our constant matrix is 9, 10, and 75. We're going to find the inverse here. We're going to multiply the main diagonal, remember, from left to right as you read, and uh, that's going to be 10. We subtract the other product of the opposite diagonal, and that's 15 for the other diagonal. Uh, 10 minus 15 is negative 5, so we have 1 over negative 5. The only thing we do now is switch the elements of the main diagonal and take the other diagonal and make the signs opposite. Finally, we multiply all of this times our constant matrix. So let's do that. 1 times 910 is 910. Negative 15 times 75 is minus 1125. Negative 1 times 910 is negative 910. And finally, 10 times 75 is 750. We combine those amounts using integer math, and we have uh, minus 215 and minus 160. And then finally, we multiply by negative one-half. Now remember, multiplying by negative one-half is the same as dividing by negative five. And of course, when you have two negatives in a multiplication problem or a division problem, you get positive results. So we end up finding out that we have 43 cakes and 32 pies. And I love pie. OK, so that's problem one. Let's take a look at that. If you want to freeze that, pause that, for your homework, you can do that. All right, let's go to the next problem. Next problem has to do with a basketball. We see that Marcus uh, scored 16 times in last night's game. Didn't make any free throws, but he did score two pointers and three pointers. Tells us how what the total points were. So we're looking at two points and three point shots. Those are going to be our two variables. And I arbitrarily assigned x for the number of two point shots and y for the number of three points. And you could have done it the other way. This is just how I did it. So the number, total number of shots is 16, just x plus y equals 16. Now when we talk about point values, we want to be sure to include the point values and for a total points of 37. Turn it into a matrix equation again. We've got a uh, coefficients of 1 and 1, 2 and 3, x, y, and a constant matrix of 16 and 37. We multiply the main diagonal, 1 times 3 for 3. We multiply the other diagonal, 1 times 2, and we subtract 2 from 3. And we just get 1 over 1, or 1. So we can just drop the 1, since anything times 1 is itself. So we also, now we have to flip the elements, and we take the other diagonal and make the elements opposite, other opposite. 
Let's do a little multiplication. 3 times 16 is 48. Negative 1 times 37 is minus 37. Negative 2 times 16 is negative 32. 1 times 37 is 37. Combine them, and we get 11 and 5. Now let's go back. Ah, X. What did X stand for? Number of two-point shots. So there were 11 two-pointer shots, 5 three-point shots. Let me back up here. You can get that whole shot. Pause it if you need to, and you can fill in your worksheet if you didn't make it to class today. Okay, we got one more problem before um, you can start doing your homework. Let's look at that. Deals with money. Everybody loves money. And that's about how much I have left after my paycheck. Uh, you have $3.80 in change in your pocket. You have a total of 25 nickels, dimes, and quarters. If you have one more dime than quarters, how many of each coin do you have? So let's break that down. We can actually turn this now into three equations. And as you know, you're not required to do these by hand. You can use a graphing calculator. So we have three variables we have to define this time. And I'm going to make x into nickels, y into dimes, and z into quarters. No, we have a, I have a total of 25 coins, so simply the number of x plus the number of y plus the number of z is 25. We just don't know how much of each yet. Now, since we have a value of $3.80, we can put the values with our variables. Nickels, of course, are 0 0.05. Dimes are one-tenth or 0.1. And quarters are one-quarter, one-fourth, or 0.25 in the decimal notation. Finally, it, it tells us that you have one more dime than a quarter. So since dimes are Y and quarters are Z, and if you have one more dime, that must mean when you subtract the number of quarters from dimes, you'll have one. So that's where we come up with this equation. Now notice there is no X, so of course in our coefficient matrix, we're going to have a zero. So we've got X, Y, Z, their coefficients are one, one, and We've got a coefficient for nickels, coefficient for dimes, 0.1, coefficient for quarters, and finally, 0, 1, negative 1. X, Y, Z, nickels, dimes, quarters, and we have the total amount of coins, 25, the total amount of money, $3.80, and the difference of dimes, or quarters from dimes, which is 1. Got to find that inverse now. So I'm going to let you do that. Find the inverse with the calculator. So enter all of these in. And let me get that calculator out. Uh, okay, here we go. Now I've already put this stuff in. But you're going to go to matrix. Let me turn this thing on. I'm going to clear that because I've already done it. So you're going to go to matrix. And we're going to enter all that in matrix A. So i got to scroll over to edit and enter. It's going to be a 3x3 three three matrix. And I put in all the values. As you see, we have ones in the top. I got a nickel. I got 0.1 for a dime. 0.25 for a quarter. Zero for nickels. I got one for dimes and negative one for quarters. All right, that's that matrix. So now I'm going to go back and in B, oops, in B, I'm going to go over to edit going to go down to B. Now that's going to be a 3 by 1. Remember, that's my constant matrix. And as you see, I have a 3 by 1. And I've got the amount of quarters in there. I mean, sorry, the amount of uh, coins, which is 25. I've got $3.80, 3 dollars And then I've got the 1 in my matrix. Okay, now we're ready to use this calculator to get our solutions. So I'm going to hit second uh, quit. And now I'm going to find that matrix A. So I'm going to hit second and the matrix button, enter for A. Now I'm going to hit the uh, inverse button, which of course is the matrix button without hitting the second key right there. That gives me the little negative one. Now all I just got to do is get that matrix B. So I'm going to go back down here, uh, hit two. Now that's what you should have on the calculator right there. All you got to do is hit enter. 
and the numbers appear. You got four nickels, you got 11 dimes, and 10 quarters. So I really want you guys to refer to this when you're doing your homework, and uh, hopefully you'll have great, great success. Thank you.